we're going to be talking about crisis crops. What crops you could be growing in your garden right now. uncertainties right now with inflation and food shortages and my goodness our president telling us that we are going to be having food shortages in the upcoming months <laughs> hi friends welcome home I hope you're blessed and doing well cuz I'm doing great welcome back to the garden I want to share with you all some really important um, staple crops some nutrient dense crops and some supplemental crops that you can add to your garden so you're going to break down the three categories just like that you need your staples you need your nutrient dense and you need your supplemental okay it's really really simple so your staple crops are those crops that you're going to be looking to plant and make sure that you're growing that are really high in calories. They're going to supply you with the necessary calories that you need and that your family needs to help keep you healthy and strong and vigorous, right? We need the vigor. We need the energy, okay? And then you need your nutrient-dense crops. Your nutrient-dense crops are all of those greens. They're going to help bring in the nutrients that your body needs to stay healthy, to stay strong, okay? And to build a really, really high immune system that is packed with a powerful, powerful workhorse system to fight off anything that may try to come and attack your body, all right? All right, then you have your supplemental crops. Supplemental crops are what I consider things that, let's say, um, I want to grow something that I saw in the grocery store and um, it's really expensive at the time. And perhaps I want to give it a grow because I want to try it out. Maybe it's a supplemental crop because we don't eat that much of it, but I do want to have it growing in my garden because we do enjoy it from time to time. Um, a supplemental crop can be those things that you want to try and enjoy and your family wants to try and enjoy, but you know, it's just not something that you eat consistently. So I have several different um, staple crops growing in my garden. One is potatoes. You all saw me plant my potatoes out. I have potatoes growing in the ground and I have potatoes growing in containers. So if you think you only can grow potatoes in the ground, you are mistaken. You can definitely pop some potatoes in a container and grow your potatoes root crops in containers really really simple so i have lots of potatoes here and i'm going to show you all what i have growing it's time to heal them up <laughs> because i haven't been out here to do it um well i've been out here i just haven't healed up my potatoes how about that um and it's definitely time i think i can get a larger yield if i heal up my potatoes so here they are they are this is my crop of potatoes growing all within my garden and um, I am also growing them in containers. So my potatoes that are growing in the containers are doing really well. And I hope to have a nice crop coming from these potatoes. Some of you in certain regions are lucky enough to be able to grow rice and wheat and those type of things. Those are absolutely staple crops. Um, but another staple crop that you can grow are uh, root crops like yams and cassava, um, zucchini, beans, cabbage. Those are staple crops. Um, cabbage is a really good one because it can be fermented and used in many different applications. But let's remember that fermented foods offer up great, great nutritional value. All right. So here I have my um, zucchini plants. I have many other zucchini plants growing in my garden, but I am favoring my yellow zucchini at the moment. Um, and when I see that I get something like this, a yellow and other leaves or powdery mildew, um, I need to inspect my plant and I cut off the leaves. So here, I just cut the leaf off there to prevent the spread of any powdery mildew. Once I remove the leaves that have the powdery mildew, um, I do not compost it into my compost bin I actually get rid of it and put it in the garbage because I don't want that to spread throughout my garden um, 
but I'm in zone 8A. A lot of you were asking what zone I'm in. I'm in zone 8A in Georgia. And here we have a lot of heat and humidity. So whenever there's rain, there's more than likely gonna follow some humidity. And sometimes there's no rain at all. And there's, it's just so humid, you can barely breathe. Um, so with that comes the powdery mildew. It's really inevitable here. It happens every single season. All right, but plants like zucchini um, are also good for your staple crops. Come on, let's go over here and let's take a look at, um, we got some beans growing over in my expansion garden. But if you have a small space, you could definitely grow vertically. Beans are really easy to grow on TP trellises. It's super simple. So here um, we have some beans that the deers have come in and chomped on. I see last night okay didn't notice that this morning but here we go we have some beans and it doesn't stop the production because there is the blooms that the beans will start to produce from um, but they have removed a substantial amount of the leaves from this side but as you can see it's growing all the way up and it has reached the top of this TP. and then what I'll do is I'll just take it and I'll just guide it right back down and it'll be a continuous process up and down but here is a beautiful purple variety um, of green beans that is starting to get going here and you can grow vertically here. Corn can be placed in two categories. It can be placed in a supplemental category and perhaps in a staple crop category for those that want to use corn in a versatile way because corn can be used um, depending on the variety for um, meal. You could use it and um, grow certain varieties and you can make bread with it. Um, so corn is a really valuable crop. Um, then also of course we can use it as the vegetable that we love so so much. Our sweet corn um, is absolutely delicious and so you could grow corn and in and interchangeably decide if corn is going to be a staple crop for you or a supplemental crop. This happens to be sweet corn, um, and I haven't thinned this sweet corn just yet. I'm gonna let these plants um, get of a pretty good size before I decide to choose which one is a weak corn seedling and which one is not, and I'll just cut it, cut it off. Um, but here we have our corn patch, not a very large one. Um, I'm gonna start off with something like this this year, this season, and then I'll eventually expand it um, on down uh, through our lower part of our metal area down there. But yeah, corn, why not grow a little bit of corn? And it can be grown in containers. Yes, you can grow corn in your raised beds and in your containers as well, all right? And then, oh guys, look, my beans are up. I just planted so many other beans because I didn't have enough beans and the deers, we haven't gotten our fence in yet. So the deers um, keep coming in and, and munching on my beans. Here's a nice uh, crop of beans and I have uh, several rows of them and I'm growing a lot of beans because they happen to be a really good staple crop for us. We eat beans consistently. Um, the Kentucky Wonder Bean, um, this year I am going to grow that one out as a snap bean, but also I'm going to grow it out as a um, whole bean. So I'm going to dry it and I'm going to, you know, save some for that as well. So now that we have an idea as to what type of staple crops you could be growing, it's like onions, corn, potatoes, yams, cassava, rice, wheat, and cabbage, let's talk about the nutrient dense crops that you could be adding to your garden. So we're talking about greens that are high in nutrient value, kale, cabbage, collards, chard, arugula. Those are the greens that you definitely want to add to your garden. Now zucchini, zucchini is part of that nutrient dense crop, okay? Tomatoes are a part of that as well. And um, we want to add those to our garden. So today I'm going to show you some varieties of kales and some root vegetables that you can be adding to your garden as staple and nutrient dense crops. Now for me, a supplemental crop would be something like eggplant because we don't eat eggplant consistently here in our garden. We actually eat eggplant every now and then, but I love growing eggplant and I love having it from time to time. So I add eggplant in my garden as a supplemental crop. 
another supplemental crop for me really at this time is corn because I haven't grown a variety for meal um, and I don't grow a large, large mass of corn to call it a staple crop. So our friends over at Survival Garden Seeds would like to offer you all a discount for trying out their seed variety. What I really like about Survival Garden Seeds is that they have a large seed selection to choose from. But more importantly, they have three collections that I wanna to bring to your attention today. The first collection is the Home Garden Collection. This collection is really great because it comes with 30 heirloom variety seeds and the collection is so fairly priced, you guys, with every single collection. It's literally like getting your seeds for a dollar a packet. And then there's the Homesteaders Collection. Now the Homesteaders Collection has 50 seeds. This one is a little bit larger. You have a large, I mean huge collection, you guys. Wasn't that collection absolutely amazing? Now the third collection is one of my favorite collections of all. This one happens to be the Farmer's Seed Vault. The Farmer's Seed Vault, you guys, is a hundred seeds. This is your one-stop shop for starting your garden. Starting your <laughs> crisis crop survival garden okay this has it all and what i like about it the most is that it's in this really cool tote and you all know i advocate for starting a seed bank and here they have a collection that's a seed vault i absolutely love it let me let you take a look at this one as well so here we have the farmer's seed vault and there are so many varieties of seeds in here you guys i mean there's so much to choose from and there's so much to choose from it's an endless supply of what you need to get you started so there you go look how beautiful that is actually sage and beautiful bunch of onions look at that one of my favorite varieties the golden zucchini and just like that there you have it you guys those are staple and nutrient dense and supplemental crops that you could be growing in your garden right now in the event that there was a crisis. I wanna encourage you today to get out there and get something growing and check back in with me, you know, check back in with me and let's see how these crops are growing along. Survival Garden Seeds has a discount for you guys. It's listed in the description box below. Use that discount code, beautiful10, and you can get 10% off of those three collections. So any of those three collections that you choose, you can get a discount on it. So use it because this is an opportunity for you to get a good seed bank going. And I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.